Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Spindle TV. It's good to be back. I uh, haven't uh, put out a live video on the public space uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, last week, I was uh, in Georgia at the Georgia Woodworking Show, and uh, or was it the week before last? I can't remember. Uh, weeks are kind of blending together, and uh, so we didn't get a chance to really, uh, you know, get a class or anything. And uh, didn't get to get one last week as well either. <clears throat> For those of you might be wondering, or that might be wondering about the patriotic box that we were working on the last couple of weeks, uh, I I've got that all worked out. I'm going to be releasing the files uh, shortly. Uh, what I want to do is I've got some wood on order. When it comes in, I want to make it first so I can get some nice photos and everything, and then I'll release the files and stuff. So it's going to be kind of the it's a it's my big project i'd like to do you know it's not really a big project but it's my uh i want this to be done right so uh, i want to be able to get some nice photographs and everything of it when i release the files and so i'm just waiting for the wood to come in and and then we'll go from there okay so <clears throat> tonight i want to do something a little bit different you all know that i've got the new building uh erected and put up and everything Still working on the power and all, but I'm in the process of getting things set up. Now, believe it or not, as a woodworker and everything, one of the things I've never really had is a good workbench or, you know, assembly table. Um, my, inevitably, my table saw or my table saw's outfeed table always turned into the assembly table. And I never really had a really good table. And um, I had the opportunity uh, this past weekend to go down to South Florida and pick up a scissor lift. Uh, and the uh, scissor lift table, should I say scissor lift table. And um, it uh, is, um, it's awesome <laughs> to say the least. Uh, the, let's see if I can, uh, let me switch over to another screen here and we're going to be on camera number two. Let's put me down. Let's put me down at the bottom. Now this, uh, the brand of this table is uh, a Bali. My table is a Guardian, um, but uh, this will kind of give you a, a general idea of the table. Um, let's see if we can maximize that up. So the table itself is uh, 29 inches wide by 52 and a quarter inches in length. And it has a 35 inch uh, hydraulic lift. So, and uh, it can hold up to 1,100 pounds. And I got a really good deal. This table is almost brand new. Uh, it was only used a, a couple of times. And uh, Facebook Marketplace, first time I ever kind of really shopped there and all. And, um, I came across this table and it was a still in a sense, you know, and uh, uh, so I had a chance to pick it up. And what the guy just showed in the video, it's got these safety rails all around the bottom that stop it. Uh, like if, you know, if it gets caught on something or anything like that. Uh, and um, it's phenomenal, right? So, but I, what I want to do is now I have this lift and what it's going to do for me, it's going to allow me. Uh, different heights when I'm building, you know, tall cabinets or short projects or things like that. I can lower my workbench or raise my workbench to make it comfortable for me to work with uh, and everything. But the table itself is not big enough uh, as far as a workbench. You know, it doesn't give me enough room to do what I want. So I've got two uh, goals that I want with this, uh, this table. No, or I got two objectives that I want with this, should I say. And uh, objective number one, is it is objective the right word? I got two must-haves <laughs> with this table. Uh, number one is it needs 
to be absolutely flat, right? So the um, the the idea of a torsion box comes to mind, but also many of you that are woodworkers, you're probably very familiar with the Ron Polk workbench. You know that style workbench that's kind of open design that framing interweb framing and everything uh and allows for storage and job site portability and all that stuff and that's all wonderful i like that style uh that'll give me the internal web will give me the um the the flatness and stability i need for the the table but on one side of the table i'll have that open where i can throw my nail guns and things, you know, just drop, you know, slide them in and my drills and stuff, I can have them kind of in that, those open slots that you, that you might be familiar with. Uh, let's take a look at, let me see if I can pull up. Um, let's see if I can pull up uh, some images. <clears throat> dun, dun, dun. And I'll pull them up behind my head. Let me get my head back down. Okay, so there's one and two. So now these graphics, they're not mine uh, by any means. They are, were on, um, they were on uh, GrabCAD. Uh, the GrabCAD, GrabCAD's great for all kinds of free projects and things. But uh, this open slot design, it kind of has that Ron Polk feeling, you know, and everything um, and all, uh, but I don't want it all the way around. So the, um, I definitely want the internal webbing, you know, we're going to design that tonight. I definitely want that internal webbing and everything because that's going to give me that torsion box style flatness, right? Uh, that's going to you know allow me to really uh, get this to be sturdy and flat not just not just throwing you know two sheets of plywood together or anything like that um, but what I want is uh, number two is on one side of the table I want those openings where I can just throw tools in there my biggest fear is that it becomes a catch-all of junk right I don't want that you know but my air tools and my drills and everything like that that's important now the other side, the other side of the table is going to be full extension pull-out drawers. Now these drawers are going to have Kaizen foam inserts in them. And on the CNC, I'm going to cut out for all of my marking tools, uh, gauges, and um, my T-squares and squares and, and uh, you know, uh, hand tools. Uh, planes, whatever the case may be. I want to create a nice, a beautiful uh, drawer system, four drawers over on the other side uh, with these inserts nicely cut out so my tools are nice and organized and everything has its place. I've never really had that level of organization in my shop. I mean, I've been somewhat organized, but I've never really been organized, you know. I've had, um, I've had, uh, French cleat systems and shelving systems and blah, 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 this and that and everything. Uh, but when it came to my drawers in my toolboxes and everything, man, everything was just thrown in. And what I've been spending the last month trying to do is I've literally, literally taken one of my toolboxes that has uh, one, two, four, six, eight, eight drawers, and then one big long one. And it's completely packed with just crap, you know, stuff that I, oh, I need to save this. I need to save this bolt. I need to save this nut. I need to save this hinge. I need to save this, 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 and this. And, you know, I've got tools mixed in with drill bits and I've got drill bits mixed in with this and screws and nut. And it was just, it's a disaster. I get so disappointed in myself and I get, I get kind of, uh, not OCD, but I get, I get, I get depressed. Like when I go to look for something and I'm spending more time searching for something than actually building the project that I went out there to build. And I'm wasting the whole day 
not getting anything accomplished when and I have very little time as it is between customers with digital woodcarver and trainings and all. So my shop time is precious to me. And when I'm, when I'm like tonight, I, I, I was looking for a wrench, a wrench from my CNC to change the bit. I don't know where I set it. I put it somewhere, but it wasn't where it was supposed to be. I spent 35 minutes of the only free time I had searching for that wrench. Finally, I gave up. I went out to my car, grabbed my socket set, and pulled out one of my metric wrenches that fit. It was for the neck and everything. I still haven't found that wrench, right? I don't want that. I do not want that. I want this time. I've got a brand new shop building. I've got an opportunity to start out right. I'm not in any rush for anything, right? So on this, this I, I wanted, I've always wanted the lift table, and I've never been able to afford the lifts. Those things that brand new, that, that scissor lift, um, table brand new is $4,527 or something like that. Can't afford that. Cook, not even close to that. And knock on wood, I had the opportunity to buy it for cheap. I mean, it was almost a steal and I couldn't pass it up. Drove four hours there, four hours back. So I got, now I've got the lift. I got the base. Now I want to build the bench and that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm, I'm going to stop rambling now. We're going to get into it. But I just want to tell you I'm kind of passionate about this, right? And I want the one side to be open so I can throw my air guns and stuff, you know, and grab them quickly. But the other side is going to be foam insert drawers, clean, nice, and organized, right? So that's the goal. That's my two wants for this bench, besides it being flat. And then the only thing I haven't figured out yet is because I haven't, actually raised my new table the new to me table i haven't raised it up you know i haven't got it hooked up to where it raises up or anything you know and everything um so i don't know on the roller system i don't know where they're positioned and because of the security uh the 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 sensors uh the bars that pop that push on the side and their electronic sensors that kill the motor and all that stuff uh i wanted this bench to kind of wrap around or this, this bench, I wanted to have kind of like a frame underneath it to sit on and wrap around, but I need it to assemble somehow, right? So what I'm thinking is there's going to be a frame. It's got to be sturdy, right? I, I might have a lot of weight on this. Now, this is 52 inches by 29, so I'm not going to go much, much, you know, I'm not going to go crazy like 4 by 8 or anything. Like that. I'll figure it out when we draw and design. But I'm thinking of like a, a frame underneath that's that kind of like, slides over the table like a fitted lid if you will and then on the outside because i don't know where the rollers are underneath i can't really bolt it down to the top of the table because i don't know if those rollers where they're positioned i will tomorrow when i have more time to work on it but tonight i don't so what i'm going to do is i'm going to design it where we are bolting in around the perimeter but even that is a bit iffy because those rails that you push up and everything they uh there's electronics there somewhere, so I really don't know how it's going to mount to the base. I just know it needs to be on top of the base, right? All right, so there you go. There, that hopefully, I didn't lose all of you in that long spill, but that is kind of what we're going for, but a little bit refined and my, my style, right? The way that I would like to have it um, built. And... Um, I honestly think, I honestly think I'm 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 going I'm going with a, a three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood, uh, you know, for the framing and all, and uh, I'll do some edge banding and everything to make it look really good. Uh, I don't think hardwood would be a good choice for me or anything like that um, because of the wood movement. And I'm in Florida, humidity and all that stuff. So we're going to go with plywood build and uh, we'll go from there. So let's start. Uh, we're going to start our class tonight in SketchUp. And um, the... Grab my keyboard. And unfortunately, I don't, uh, there, there's a window <laughs> that I would really love to get back one day. Um, and if any of you here, I'll, I'll ask this question to the group. I have dual monitors set up 
but my computer thinks that there's a third monitor somewhere. I can't find it anywhere. And the little windows uh, that are supposed to pop up on the screen uh, and everything, they're opening up in that third <laughs> that third window somewhere, right? Um, so I don't have access to them anymore and I can't change the styles or any of that stuff. Um, I've tried to go into the display settings and turn that monitor off and this and that, but none of it works. <laughs> So I've got something connected with everything that it thinks it's a monitor. Um, but if anybody knows how to get those windows back on the main screen, a little a little keyboard trick or something like that, uh, let me know in the chat section. <laughs> or in the comment section. Chat section, that's fine. All right, so let's, uh, so you're going to have to, we got this kind of green ground background. I like it clear and white, but unfortunately, um, the, uh, I don't think it's gonna give me that style option because that box is gone somewhere. And I tried the, um, I've tried the uh, uh, show windows side by side option, right? <laughs> and they're not there, I don't know where they are. But anyway, all right. Let's get into our camera view. We are in SketchUp, SketchUp version eight. It's the latest, the last free version that was ever put out for SketchUp. And if you're interested in learning SketchUp, <clears throat> um, jscustomcreations.com, Jay Bates, still has on his website, uh, he has a SketchUp, de a page dedicated to SketchUp, and he still has a link to download SketchUp eight. So if you're interested in something like that um, and you want to learn SketchUp and everything, it's a great program for 3D visualizations. And all the designs that I draw in here, I can import over to Vetric all those files and everything. Okay. Awesome. Blossom. Okay. Making sure my head's not in the way. I'm not sitting in the middle of the screen. We're good to go. Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody uh, for hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate you. Let's see what we can get into. All right, so first thing I'm going to draw is my table. So if I come in uh, to uh, this window right here, um, let me pop it. Well... Well, it went somewhere. There we go. All right, so this is kind of the manual for this table. And this table is 29 inches uh, on, as far as the, you know, the base frame and everything. Uh, platform. Is platform, base frame, platform. Platform is the tabletop. I think platform is the tabletop. So it's 31 and a half inches by 55. And the base frame... Is probably that base frame that it rolls on and everything. All right, this thing can hold 1,100 pounds and it's got a 30 inch travel height, that's cool. All right, so 31 and a half by 55. And so uh, another thing on this, uh, it's hard to see, it's all blurry and all, but these silver rails around the bottom, those are the electronics that if one of them gets hit, it's a sensor, limit switch if you will, or a stop switch and it kills the motor. So when I mount this, I want it to kind of slide over this frame, but I need these to stay exposed. And I don't know if I can drill into the edge face frame. It's not the face frame, the edge frame. I don't know if I can mount from the edge because uh, of the electronics of the sensors. Again, I have to really take that apart and kind of look at it. And I also don't know, I want it sturdy, right? I don't want this. To, and now this thing is rock solid, by the way, three, Myself and two other big old boys, corn-fed country boys, we could not lift this table. This table is a beast in weight. So I love that fact because it's solid, right? It ain't it ain't moving around on the floor or anything like that. It ain't shaking around. So my platform, my base is solid as a rock. I need the bench to be solid too. So the mounting system is going to be just as critical as everything else. All right, so 31 and a half by 55. That's the first thing that I'm going to draw. And so I'm going to draw out a rectangle and I'm going to type in 31.5 comma 55 enter. 
and let's do that in the right keyboard 31.5 comma 55 enter and we're looking at it from a top view right here uh, let's go and look at it from a front view okay now I'm gonna go push pull and I'm gonna pull this up this table it's probably about an inch and a half thick I'm just gonna go one inch uh, thick and then I'm going to triple click on this and hit the letter G to group this together and I'm gonna just name this my base right and I'm gonna create that group so now I have the base here and my table is gonna be built mounted on top of that now I would love for your input guys and girls on this in the chat area and everything. I don't want to go four by eight, right? But I also don't want to go too small. Um, I'm thinking that, well, I mean, it's 31 inches already, right? So I could technically go 48 inches on the width, but I don't want to go 96 inches on the length. I don't think I do anyway. Tell me if I'm wrong, thinking wrong. Now I have room in my shop for a four by eight table. Should I go four by eight on my workbench or should I make it tight and right? You know, not big, compact, but you know, sturdy, right? Cause I'm built, I'm using it as an assembly table, a workbench and all that, all right? So let me know what your thoughts are. But in the meantime, I'm going to uh, come off of here and I'm gonna draw another window and let me get I'd love your comments right J's is J A Y S J's J A Y S custom creations plural J's custom creations dot com 40 by 72, John Thompson with a great, that sounds like a really, really good size. Let's take a look at that in perspective. So let's go here and let's go uh, 40 comma 72. And let's push pull this uh, as this is gonna be plywood. Now I'm gonna build this to scale. So when I push pull this, it's going to be 2130 seconds. Okay. That three quarter inch plywood. 2330 seconds. Let's go 2330 seconds, not 21. Okay. And SketchUp doing me dirty. It's rounding it up, but that's okay. Uh, and, and, and it's, it, I know what size it is. All right. Let's group that together. And this is going to be just uh, my sheet. All right, now let's take a look at this. If I come here and I move this, M for move, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna snatch it right there for a second and grab it in the center, snap to the center there. I'm gonna grab this in the center right here midpoint let me snap to the center there okay so that looks promising that looks promising now I need to uh, let me zoom in here I need to lift this up okay Man, that looks promising. What do y'all think? I think that's 40 by 72. That could be it. Not too big, not the 96, not 48. That could be it. I think I'm going to I'm going to work with that. I like that size. Thank you, John Thompson. Uh try the shift key uh and the windows key and hold those two Hold those two and hit the left or right arrow. It might work to move the focused program screen. Let me open up that window. So the styles window. And let me do real quick what David said. Hold the shift key. 
and click the Windows key. Is it is that the Windows key? <laughs> Hold on, the Windows key on the keyboard, you dummy. Hold on a second, I'm an idiot. Uh, escape. Hold the Shift key and the. <gasps> My keyboard doesn't have a Windows key because it's not a Windows keyboard. And then he says, and then try the left or right arrow to see if it changes. Oh, that did something. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. hold on. Well, that's doing something, but it didn't get my screen. <laughs> uh, so that did something, David, but... Uh, what we'll do is uh, I will um, I'll come back to that when we're not doing a class because I think that might work. Uh, I think I'm just uh, gosh forbid if I lose this screen. <laughs> that suck. All right, so now uh, I'm gonna take this uh, sheet good and I'm gonna hit the move tool and I'm gonna grab it at the bottom and I'm gonna hold the control key down so I'm moving a copy right here. And now I want it to go up a certain height. <laughs> so uh, how high, how tall do I want this uh, and everything? And um, the ruler fell on the floor a minute ago. Let me grab that really quickly. All right, all right, all right. So what I want is I need room to kind of get things and all that stuff. Uh, so, uh, and again, this is adjustable up and down, right? Uh, I want it flat and I want it strong. So I'm gonna go 10 inches. I'm gonna go 10 inches. So if I hit the number 10 on the keyboard, it'll move up 10 inches from where it was. All right. Okay. Now, 10 inches might be a little much, right? I don't know. Uh, let's get the framing kind of drawn <clears throat> and then we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we, might, we might bring it down a little bit in size. Now, if we were to look at this kind of framing style and everything, if we were to kind of look at the end joints here and stuff, uh, the uh, end uh, pieces wrap it into the side pieces. 12-inch uh, side piece with a 2-inch at the top and 2-inch at the bottom for the frame, then you can make deep jaws. There you go. So, so two inch. Now, I'm, uh, John Thompson, I'm uh, on the two inch. You're you're thinking of uh, doubling up two sheets of. I'm using plywood, not hardwood, uh, for the top and the bottom. So you're thinking two sheets, side panels, and then two sheets. That's not, it's almost two inches, but uh, is that what you're referring to? Is that what you're thinking? Um, and Gene says, I would make the width so I could reach uh, the other side. No, I don't want, I don't want to reach the other side. Um, and you're talking about at the top. Um, I, I have a, uh, um, I have a pretty, where's my, where's my camera at? I have a pretty decent reach. Um, I can, I can reach the other side at, on 40 inches. Uh, I could be pretty damn close on that. So that's, that's good for me. Belts and the ends. Yeah, make that 12 inches.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we were buffering really bad there for a minute. Hope I didn't lose a lot of you, but I was not plugged in or connected to the Ethernet. I had everything set up, but I forgot to plug in the cable. So, my apologies. You didn't miss anything. I stopped talking as soon as I realize, realized that I wasn't connected to the internet. And, uh, which caused the buffering. So, I apologize about that. That was my fault. Uh, when I set up, I forgot to plug in the cable. Okay. Let's try this again. Goodness gracious. Okay. You might get some buffering. Let's see if we let's see if we get it worked out. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start again. Uh, what John said was, uh, what made sense was uh, two inches on the top, two inches on the bottom for the side rails. So that's the thickness of the top and the bottom, not counting the cutout where the drawers are going to be. Uh, so basically 12 inches. So I'm going to bring this back down and touch it off here at the top. I'm going to move it up again just a little bit and type in 12 and move that up it looks crazy when we're out here it looks like it's up a million miles but it's only 12 inches and now i'm going to draw in the uh the frame right this is going to be the top and bottom so let's draw in the frame here and on this frame we're going to push pull this is also going to be uh 23 30 seconds And I'm going to triple click that group. I'm going to hit move and I'm going to grab it on the outside or inside edge here and hold the control key down. Drag a copy here. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is just a rough skeleton until we actually do all the joinery, right? I'm just getting the skeleton drawn out. Then we'll get the joinery drawn up. So in here, the uh, next piece is gonna go here. And we're gonna push, pull, and I'll pull it out this way. Uh, 23, 30 seconds. Again, I'm gonna triple click on that and group it so it's treated like one item. And then I can move that in. And of course, again, this is not joined yet. I haven't done the rabbits or any of that joinery. I'm just getting the um, just getting the basic frame kind of laid out here, and then we'll get all the rabbit joinery and all that stuff. <clears throat> I'm gonna move this, hold down the control key, and drag a copy here, and that's gonna be kind of my basic box, and then we'll get all the inside stuff done in just a moment. Now let's get the uh, before we get the inside stuff drawn, um, I'm going to have, again, going back to the um, <clears throat> the reference. Bear with me. So we're going to have one center rail going down and we'll have, I want, uh, I do want the four drawers on the 70 inches and everything. So we will divide that accordingly. Okay. So on here and again, um, this is all rough drawing. We'll do all the finessing in just a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So we're going to take this object here and I'm going to if I measure 
across the inside of my box from inside to inside, I'm at uh, 62 and 9 16 inches. Okay. And um, the. Bear with me just one moment. Stand by. Simple math, right? Uh, so 70 inches, 60 inches is five foot. So in here, I'm five foot 10, right? So I'm at uh, 60 plus 10 inches, 70 inches and nine sixteenths, 79 sixteenths. Now, that 70 and nine sixteenths, I want to divide that in half, uh, 70.5625 and divided by two, copy that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come right in the middle and when I drag this out, it's gonna drag a guideline. And on that guideline here, I can, let me get down to the mid range. There's my middle and the um now that distance that that distance here is let me put it i need to divide this in half do, 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 do. One more time. And then I'm drawing a line to kind of represent. Every line has a center point. So when I move my tape measure over, I can snap to that center point. And now I have my four sections, right? Probably an easier way to do that, right? Uh, but that's how we got it done. So that's going to be my four sections there. Now, uh, this is going to represent the center of my material. So, um, the I'm going to take and hide this piece so we can see it from the side here. And I'm going to take this part. And I'm going to hold down my move, M for move. And I'm going to grab it right in the center. Hold down the control key. And I'm going to snap that on that line, the center of that piece. Once again, I'm going to grab this piece in the middle. Snap to there. Grab that piece in the center. And I'm going to drag it to there. Okay, that's going to represent that. Now, on my 40 inches on the inside, let me unhide, edit, unhide. Unhide the last, there we go. Um, in here, inside to inside, I'm at 38 and 9 sixteenths. And so, if I take my tape measure and drag out to there, that'll be my center. Now I'm going to take this part, even though this part is longer, we got to shorten the ones up in here. I'm going to move this and then uh, I'll make it unique. So I'm going to hide this part for right now. 
I'm going to select this and again I'm going to grab it in the middle use the move tool grab it in the middle and I'm going to hold down the control key because I'm dragging a copy now the most important thing to remember about the SketchUp software is when you move or drag a copy whatever you do to the original or that copy it's going to match the two unless you make the object unique so if I take this piece here and I right click on it and I make it unique that means I'm making it different than the other two because if I take this one oops if I take this object here and I decide to shorten it up it's going to shorten up the other side right uh, because those two parts are copies of each other so what I do to one happens to the other unless I make it unique right so the middle piece being unique now I can bring this in and uh, I can you know size it appropriately to where it rabbits into the inside of my panel okay and all now um, <clears throat> uh, welcome Lakeside Crafts John says I would leave the dividers solid so I have walls for the drawers uh, on you know them and everything you know for you know the hinges and all yeah absolutely so um, on this side over here they're gonna be solid because I need to have um, wall for the drawer slides and and everything like that uh, the full extension drawer slides and all and um, and uh, so they're gonna be solid in here but uh, in here I will open them up on this side and on the front uh, so I have pass through in case uh, because this is gonna be open such as you know this bench here but I have pass through uh, in case I need to run cords or something or oh or whatever right so I, I can pass through but the other side is gonna be solid it's gonna be solid it's gonna be closed off because I don't want dust getting into it there's gonna be dust but you know what I mean uh, but I want it solid um, on the drawer side because there's gonna be foam inserts and drawers and all of that stuff so I want it closed off I do not want it opened up like this but on the side where there is the where I can just throw my stuff in here from the side I do want it open so that I can you know pass cords through cables through hoses whatever you know I can just store something long if I need to I can slide boards all the way from one end to the other if I need storage you know one by material whatever right all right which that's not the case I wouldn't use it for storage but anyhow so the other side is going to be solid John all right so <clears throat> here in everything uh, let's start off with our two inch so I'm going to use the tape measure here and I'm going to come down two inches okay and here I'm going to come up two inches okay and that's going to be my opening in here um, and here since I'm changing this and I don't want to change the other side right uh, I'm gonna make this one unique so it doesn't change with when I with the changes that I make over here and um, here what I do to this one I want to do to all of them on this end so I don't have to make them unique okay all right so uh, first off let's unhide all of our parts and let's go in and make our joinery so the first thing is this end piece is going to come in to a dado so for those of you uh, that uh, you know are woodworkers you know uh, for those of that aren't woodworkers that are just kind of learning trying to get you know familiar with things and terminology and stuff a dado goes across the grain a groove goes with the grain and then on your edge uh, that's typically referred to as a rabbit um, r-a-b-b-e-t not the fuzzy little fluffy animal but the joint um, and so we're gonna be creating a dado 
uh, down this panel uh, for this end piece to fit into. So I'm going to move this end piece uh, back for a moment. Um, let's try that again. <clears throat> I'm going to move this end piece uh, back and I'll grab it in the middle and move it back. And when I move it back, let's try not to move it to the side there, buddy boy. Uh, when I move it back, I want to move it um, about, you know, to, you know, the, the midpoint and everything here, or at least three eighths of an inch, right? And uh, so I'm at three eighths of an inch here. Now with that, I'm going to ungroup this panel right here, explode it is what it's called. Uh, and I'm going to select this panel and this part here, and I'm going to intersect the faces with the model. Okay. And what that's going to do um, is if I move this model out of the way, it creates the vectors here. And so now I can push pull this back to there to create that rabbit. Right. So now that I've done that, um, the part is, <coughs> excuse me, the part is uh, good there. Uh, I can go ahead and triple click back on this. G for group, and I can create that group. Okay. Now, what I just did on this side occurred on this side okay so the um, I need to push pull this back to there oops hold on when you're pushing and pulling and everything, make sure that, uh, come on now, work with me. Got to get it to snap. Come on, snap. All right, let me undo that. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Okay. Now, the lines that got drawn, right? They got drawn on this side because it was kind of a copy, right? I, I, I made that rabbit on the inside face of this, and this is the inside face of that copy. So it made the lines here. And so I want to come in here, and I want to, uh, if I move this so you can see what's happening, I want to move it out in the field here. Those lines and everything they're here. They're not connected to this face. They're just kind of floating there um, and all. So when I put this back, when I explode this piece, that means it's all, you know, joined together. Now those lines are going to be kind of part of that. And when I push and pull, oh, it's going to, oh, it's going to make me out to be a liar. It's not gonna let me use those lines. So let's select those lines. Um, and it did not want me to use those lines. So that's all right. Now I can push pull that back. Now it's weird. You're like, Laney, why are you pushing, pulling it the wrong way? Well, I'm simply going to um, take this part and you see how it's kind of still connected to this part over here. Ignore everything I just said I'm going to do. I'm going to make Let me come over here. 
I got to start all over because uh, it's, it's going to just be a pain in the butt. Okay, I'm going to make this unique. I'm going to explode it. I'm going to intersect the face. Everything is going to be the same. Intersect the faces with the model. I'm going to pull this part back out of the way for a minute. I'm going to push pull this bad boy in that three eighths. Now, I'm going to delete those lines that don't belong there. Now, this part should be the um, unique. So I should be able to get rid of those lines and it not do anything crazy over here. Okay, now I can come in and put that back. My apologies, got a little ahead of myself. Now this part here, I can explode it. I can push this back to there. And once again, I can select this and this object here. And this side too. Intersect faces with the model. And what that should do, Jay Bates is probably cringing right now going, Laney, why are you doing all that? But this is what I know. All right, so push pull. Get that back. I'm going to delete those lines. And then I'm going to move that into place. Okay. So that's going to be my dados. That's how my centerpiece is going to lock into that part there. Now, on the ends here, I want this part to lock into a rabbit here. So I can go ahead and take my tape measure tool and create a center line. I can come in, draw a line down there, push pull this over to create that rabbit. And on this part here, I can pull that into there. Okay. Now, I need to repeat that four more times. So, Tape measure, drag and snap a line to the center, draw a line down that guideline, push pull this side back and snap it to that inside corner, push pull this face, let me uh, and lock it in there. Now, on these parts here, we'll repeat it two more times. Jay's like, Laney, you know you could have made the one made the copy of it, sent it over just like you did, but did all the joinery beforehand, then you wouldn't have to do it afterwards. And I'd be like, yep, you're right. But I'm going to blame it on the cold that I have. All right. Push pull and pull that into there. Tape measure to create to create a guideline. 
snap it to the center line tool I can hit the L on the keyboard to create the line tool as well push pull P tool P for push pull and push that back and snap it right to that corner then I can get out of that part I can take my push pull tool P and pull that and snap it to there okay so now what I have is I have my two end rabbits let me take this guideline get rid of that let me take this guideline okay so I have my two rabbit joints and my center joint there good job all right now my bottom and my top are just gonna they're gonna grow and glue and screw to this framing web okay that's they're just gonna glue and screw to the frame web um, my sheets and everything all right now stand by Sorry, you should be able to hear me now. Gotta love technology, I'm back, so no sound. Sound should be back now. Testing one, two, three. Uh, when I restarted the encoder, the microphone shut off. All right, we should be back now. 
Okay. Wonderful. I'm muted. I, I'm not muted anymore. You should be back now. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, so let's go back here. And um, I want to make sure that on my model um, that all of my parts are grouped uh, back together as they should be. Okay. And um, that, you know, I've, I've only got things. So what I want to do is I want to hide some parts. So I'm going to hide this. I'm going to hide the sides. Hide that. So I'm only left with, I'm going to hide the base. And so now I can, you know, any of these lines that are in here that don't belong, that are part of this geometry, they can go away. Grid lines can go away. Uh, I can get rid of all those now. And um, <coughs> I should be able to group that. That one's grouped, that one's grouped, that one's grouped. I should be able to triple click and group that. Okay, so now I can unhide everything. Okay, we'll hide the top sheet here to kind of where we're at, and I'll hide the side here. Okay, now I'm going to turn off the axes. So that way that blue line's not in our way. Wish I could change the background to a better, you know, background, but that'll be okay. Okay, now on the center rail and the ribs here, the joinery, I want them to connect. Uh, I want them to be kind of a scissor joint, bridle joint. I don't, I don't know the, uh, it's not a bridle joint, but I want them to come in and connect, uh, and kind of cross over. So uh, I'm going to select these three items and this. Uh, actually, I'm going to, let me hide everything that I don't want to deal with right now. Okay. So on my ribs here, in here in the center. I don't need this one. Hide that. So just those three panels in there. I want to select this and I want to um, intersect the faces. And what sh that should do is if I move this part, it should create the lines here. Okay. It should create those lines. And I deleted those lines earlier, if you remember, right? And what I'd like is, um, uh, I'm going to go back and, oops, put that back. But for this part, I want it to drop down from the top versus, you know, the bottom and all. So on the, oops. Let me, so, oh, come on now. Intersect. I'll move that for now. Here, I can go in and push pull. This, no, I can't. It's not gonna let me. That's okay. I can draw my lines here. It's gonna argue with me. So I can push pull this down and um, I wanna be right about on the center mark. Now my overall, let me undo that here. 
My overall height of these uh, panels in here is 12 inches, right? So when I push pull this down, I want to push pull that down six inches. Okay. And what I do for one does for them all there. And now I can uh, move this part back into uh, position. Snap that back into position. Now this time, I'm going to explode this piece here. And these are going to stay the model. They'll stay solid as a group. When I select this, I'm going to intersect the faces with the model. So if I were to hide this piece, I would have the vectors here, right? And I can hide this and hide this, and I'm, I've got these vectors here. Now my parts are coming from the top down, so let me get rid of this line. So here, oh, this line too, I need to push pull this up. So push pull and it pulls up to that line up to that line up to that line okay and the other lines they can be deleted they are not part of the um, design on both sides And across the top, I don't want any extra vectors that uh, don't need to be there because when I import these into Vetric to Toolpath and all that stuff, uh, I don't want any changes and everything. Hey Ed, how you doing, Ed Newman? Thanks. Half lap, thank you. Is that a, I, I thought a half lap was a little bit different, but uh, I guess that's a vertical half lap. Um, that'll work. Uh, let's edit, unhide the last. And so now what I have is, um, uh, let me group that. When these two parts go together, right, they should be able to, you know, come right down and intersect together to create that grid. Okay. Now, when I actually cut these out and everything, I'm going to actually use the CNC, uh, but I'll need to put in my fillets, my T-bone fillets and everything to give the router bit a place to escape and all. I could very easily do this with the table saw, hand saw, buffering again. Um, sorry about that. I could easily do this, uh, you know, this joinery with a jigsaw, a table saw, a band saw, a router bit, and a handheld router, but I'm gonna use my CNC. Uh, and yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so now we've got um, our inner grid joinery done. Our outside edge joinery done. Now we just need to do the face joinery here and here. So since this, whatever I do to this, will do to all three, all I have to do 
all I have to do is double click on this part, go within my tape measure tool and find my uh, center point, which is, let me see here, it's gonna be there. All I have to do at that point is draw a rectangle here. I could draw two lines as well. Rectangle's fine. And push pull this down, right? And all I have to do is type in the number 12 and it'll push pull it all the way to the, to the bottom of this piece because that's how tall it is. Now, I'm going to do that two times. And I'm gonna do my rectangles first so I can do it all at once. I'm gonna draw that there. Make sure you snap to the right. Um, lines. I'm gonna to go to my push pull tool Push this down and type in 12 and hit enter. Push this one down, hit 12 and hit enter. Now I can take one of these, use the push pull tool and pull this into that joint. Okay, notice I missed my line by a mile there. Don't worry about that. Um, the other two were fine. I'm a little off there, right? No problem, I can fix that. So that one I did right. I don't know what I was thinking when I drew that rectangle, but that's okay. I can come over here and push pull this face over to there to fix that. That was crazy. Let's go over to this one. Zoom in really, really tight. Make sure I'm selecting that face, push pull that It'll get dots on it and pull that over and snap it to there. That'll close up that gap. I don't know what the heck my uh, rectangles were thinking when I drew them, but uh, when I pulled the one over, it pulled all three, right? So that takes care of the side joinery. Rinse and repeat, double click on this. Take our tape measure tool, T for tape measure. Drag a guideline over and I'm gonna just snap to the center here. This time I'm gonna do, since my rectangles were all screwed up, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna use the line tool and just draw a line straight to there. Draw a line straight from there and connect that way. Then I can switch to push pull, push that down and type in 12 and hit enter. I'll come back and move all those at one time. Line tool, L for line, click, click, space bar, click, click, connect that. P for push pull, push that down, type in 12, hit enter. Go to the next one. L for line, space bar, L for line, and then connect. P for push pull, push that down, type in 12, hit enter. Now that that's done, I can just do one of these, double click on one, push pull and pull that into here snap it to that line, and that will do them all. Okay, cool beans. That is my box frame, not counting the cuts and everything on the side and the drawer boxes and all that. So file save to save up to that point. All right, okay, okay. Uh, hopefully we're doing all right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Let's go ahead and look at this from a front view, camera standard view front. Okay, so we're looking at it 
and that's more of an end than a front. So let's go camera, standard view. Let's go the left side, there we go. And on that side, we're going to uh, take the tape measure tool, pull down two inches, create that guideline, pull up two inches, create that guideline. That's gonna give me my two inch top and bottom for the framing. And then I can create my openings in here. Now on the openings and everything, um, on those openings and all, the, uh, I don't want them to go, you know, all the way to the ends and everything. So I want to kind of be like, I want to go from inside to inside here. And so I'm going to draw a line from inside to inside here. And then what that will allow me to do is I can take my tape measure tool and I can kind of snap to the center of that line right there. And then from here, I can take my tape measure tool and snap to that line to create that grid. So I've got my intersection there to my center. Now I wanna actually do the same thing here. I wanna kind of pull this out with the tape measure tool. I wanna pull this out and kind of snap there. And one more. over here okay and that's going to give me my dimensions for the inside there and so now on the end i don't want to be all you know that's the inside i don't want to be right up on the inside i want to either like be two inches in two inches in kind of thing or one and a half let's uh take that tape measure tool let's go 1.5 1.5 and then let's take a rectangle and draw it here now before I can pop this through or anything here um, I need to be inside the part so I need to undo that rectangle and I actually have to double click on this part because it's grouped together and then I got to draw the rectangle here so that I can actually push this piece through to create that hole, right? Now, I would prefer to have radiuses, you know, around here instead of, you know, square. Um, but I'm not gonna waste time doing that in SketchUp. I will correct those radiuses and everything in Vectric. When I import these vectors, I will correct those squares to create the radiuses that I want because it's gonna be easier for me in Vectric than it is to deal with it in SketchUp. Now in SketchUp, I very well could do it. I could come in here with my arc tool and I could draw an arc, you know, whatever I want it to be, whatever size and blah, 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 but I don't want to deal with that. I want radiuses in the corner and a nice little curved arc and I'll, it's going to be easier for me to deal with that in Vectric. So, Hello. now the um now i can just repeat that through here and i only need to do it once in here and it'll 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 copy to all three there for the pass through and i'll just have to do the end as well so again using my tape measure for layout uh purposes and everything um i'm going to come in here and snap to that point going to come in here and snap over to that point. I'm going to move in an inch and a half, 1.5, 1.5, and then I'm going to draw the rectangle. And then I'm going to push pull that through to get rid of that. Okay, how are we all doing? We all doing better now that there's not that much buffering? Good. All right. 
Rinse and repeat two more times. Okay, make sure I'm on that line, nothing crazy or funky. Yep. All right, from there, inch and a half in, 1.5 enter, 1.5 enter, draw the rectangle on those guidelines, push pull, P for push pull, push in, and I'm gonna go. Now that time when I push pulled, it did not push all the way through. So I wanna make sure that it says on face to push through. And again, all this in Vetric will be softer corners and everything. It won't be so square and sharp and all. But now I'm gonna create my, uh, my boxes, you know, my fr face frame kind of the same way over here. And it's almost a good decent size for a drawer, but I don't want a two inch overhang. I'll just go an inch and a half or something, but we'll deal with that in just a moment. So the last one, once again, pull in 1.5. Pull in here, 1.5, draw the rectangle, P for push pull and push that in. Want to see on face, so that way it disappears it. All right, now on all these guidelines, right? And everything. These guidelines are kind of inside of this, uh, so I want to select this and hit delete. And then these guidelines are outside of that. So I want to select those and hit delete so I can get rid of them. Now I have some measurements here. I want to get rid of those too. Those are measurement marks. Okay. So that's gonna be opening. Now on the ends, same same thing. Now when I do the end, I gotta do each end separate, but when I do one of the inside, it'll do them all. So from here, I'm just gonna come in. Um, you know, we went two inches uh, from that joint, right? So, um, We went, <laughs> how could I forget already? An inch and a half in from that joint. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here. All right, so tape measure. Should be able to kind of snap to that. Drag over and snap to that. Come in from there, inch and a half, 1.5. 1 1.5. 1 Come down two inches. Come up two inches. Draw the rectangle, but I'm not ready to draw the rectangle yet. Now notice I drew that guideline not even on the board. Can't do that. You got to make sure that when we draw these guidelines that they are on the board. So need them on the board. All right, I need to double click into this part here, draw the rectangle. P for push pull, push that in and remove. 
Okay. On the inside here, all I have to do is just come in my inch and a half. Here's the joint right here. So I can just come in 1.5 here. And this is my joint here, 1.5. Two inches. I'll come up two inches. And I got to click into this part and draw the rectangle. And then I'm going to push pull that. And that will do it for those three. Okay, and again, in Vetric, I'm going to clean up. Make these nice and rounded corners so they're not so sharp and square and all that. But this will get me my vectors that I need for the part. Okay. All right. So on the end, the last part here on the end, two inches from the top, two inches from the bottom. Guideline there. little tape measure roll there and I can pull this one or one of these over to that from here inch and a half 1.5 from here 1.5 double click on this part draw the rectangle push pull now that didn't that ended up making a box not deleting the face. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to push pull again. And I want to make sure that it says on face. Meaning on the inside face. All right. Save. File save. Again, I'm going to get rid of the guidelines. I don't like guidelines in my way. And I'm going to get rid of my little ruler marks. Make sure there's there's one over here. The reason why I'm taking the time to get rid of those ruler marks and stuff is I don't want those vectors or anything like that. Uh, I don't want those vectors or anything like that uh, in here. Okay. Now, I'm actually going to... Uh, when it comes to the drawer boxes and everything, I'm going to utilize and, and see what size I need to be. So let's draw one and one. Uh, all I need is one and I can copy it over for the other four. But I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to make a rectangle. Um, and this is, you know, 12 inches. I'm going to, I don't want to be... Um, I can have deep drawers, right? But I don't want to be now, it's important. I don't want to be too deep because then, sh excuse my French, crap just starts piling in there and it's pointless. But what I can do in everything is I can have a couple of deep drawers, you know, one or so uh, for larger tools and stuff. But I want my hand tools, planes, squares, T-squares, uh, chisels, and all that. Again, they're going to be in foam inserts and stuff. So the height of this, now, you know, two inches down, two inches in the front, that gives me, what is my actual height if I, because this is the same height here, uh, that gives me eight inches. Now I can have one uh, deep drawer and... Um, I could also have two drawers, right? Two shallow drawers with my hand tools and things uh, and stuff. Cause heck, a three and a half inch tall drawer. Let me see, hold on a second. I've got the perfect 
scenario right here. Bear with me a second. Let's go big for just a minute. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so this drawer here, uh, this is a, one of the, a drawer for one of my toolboxes and everything. Um, this drawer, the current uh, size on the inside. is five and three quarters. My overall side is six and I got a quarter inch base, right? So five and three quarters inside here uh, for that and um, the, if I build a box like this for the one, uh, the open, the rest can be open, you know, for larger tools and all, but this is really all I need for the box. And then um, on the uh, other drawers, I can do really kind of, it's all going to be really tool based, right? So I want to lay out all the tools that I want to use and I actually want to, you know, kind of draw a design it that way, but I can't do that right this second. Uh, but uh, three inch tall drawer, three and a, it, heck I can go, it's eight inches of clearance. I can go three and a half inch drawer. That'll give me a half inch of clearance for moving and all. And that's a good size for a shallow drawer. So, uh, Good call. Two drawer, two Jeep drawers on the ends. Uh, two shallow double drawers on the middle. Good call. I like that. All right. So let's go with this. Let me delete this rectangle that uh, I created in there. Control Z. Let's come out here, and we're gonna go. Well, I'm an idiot. Hold on a second. Those drawers, uh, just so you can see the construction on those, because I'm still up large, I'm not small, but they're just uh, no fancy joinery, right? Uh, they are pocket hole screws and everything uh, made out of a select pine. Um, but, uh, they are, they're stout and then the bottom is pocket hold in, you know, so the, uh, that's going to be, again, this is a workbench. It's not going in my master bedroom, right? Uh, so that's going to be the joinery that I use, you know, quick and dirty joinery. So, um, the, uh, on that particular drawer, that's a you know a six inch tall drawer, uh, and um, it is. If I push pull that, point seven Take the tape measure, come up a quarter of an inch, uh, which is 7.30 seconds in plywood. Uh, so 7.32. Draw a line there. Ooh. 
push pull that back three eighths point three seven five. Okay. Oh, I lost my part. Hold on a minute. Okay, and then uh, I can G for group. Let's come here. So you can see what's going on. Let's move this onto the screen. All right, M for move. I'm gonna hold down the control key and I'm gonna drag this over and snap it here. Uh, and when I do that, uh, it's backwards, right? So I'm going to flip this part and I need to flip it around my green axis. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring that rabbit on the inside where uh, the uh, other part should be. And if I hide this, let's hide this front so we can see this better. So that by flipping it on the green axis, it turns that rabbit facing inward. Okay. And I can pull that down and snap that to there and everything. Now I'm going to take this part here and the um, I'm going to hold down the control key or move, hold down the control key and I'm going to drag a piece out here. I'll drag it out here. I'm going to hit Q for rotate and I'm going to rotate let me get my blue rotation angle. My mouse is killing me there. There we go. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. I'm going to move that into place here. Now here, I double click on this part I'm going to make it unique, not, not double click on it first, but I'm going to make it unique. And then I'm going to click on it and push pull that in about that far. And then I'll push pull it back and snap it to this board here, this edge. Okay. And this board gets moved up. in there where it belongs okay now I'm going to take this part and I'm going to hold down the M key hold down the control key and drag a copy to the front here but the rabbits facing the wrong direction I need to right click and I need to flip that along that green axis so it turns it around now the we'll fix the rabbits in just a minute uh, and everything but uh, this is oh lord of mercy hold on a minute I zoomed in too far went into a wall this part this 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 and this that's gonna make up my box and on the bottom side let's flip this over Because it's going to be a butt joint, right, and everything, um, the end here, this is going to butt up to there, and it's going to be um, pocket screwed in. Let me show you here. Whoa. The, um, actually... Actually, on that, and I got to make myself smaller, but uh, I got to make myself smaller because all of that stuff I just did, my head was in the way. But the pocket holes, this is three quarter, three quarter. There's no rabbit here. It's just pocketed right into the bottom. So there's actually no rabbit there uh, and everything. So that's good. That's fine. 
That's fine. So, no rabbit. No rabbit needed. So let me get my head out of the way. Need to move your head. I know, I know, I know. <sighs> All right, so what I did was I drew the four parts inside my box area where they go, and then I simply moved them out here. Now, on the bottom side, realizing that I'm going to pocket hole the bottoms in, I don't need the rabbit. I don't need the rabbit. So I just need the, the drawer parts cut. So I'm going to go back into this one. I'm going to push pull this back up to there. And I'm going to remove that line. Now that's going to do the same thing for its copy. Over here, I'm going to push pull this up. snap that into place and then I'm going to delete that center line. Huh, don't do that. Make sure when you push pull that you know you're snapped to that face, right? So it's the same height. All right, and that should fix that side over there. So that's going to it's just going to be simple box joinery and the bottom is going to get pocket screwed in push pull that's going to be 730 seconds triple click to make that a group and I can move that down into place and that'll be one of my drawer boxes now that's going to be now that's going to be my deep drawer box and it's going to have plenty of room open here so you know things I don't think I want to make the the box you know more than 6 inches tall cuz then it's just you know again it just accumulates stuff but it's going to be my deep box so larger tools can fit in there or something and John suggested that we go with move two deep boxes on each end I'm only pulling them in oops I'm only pulling them in halfway for visual purposes all right still got to make my you know I still got to make my openings and everything but that's kind of where we're at so far not counting the opening I need for this okay and then in the center let me hide this back Hold on, very important. I want to hide, not move. There we go. All right, so now I want my fine tools. I want them, I want them, I want them, right? So uh, my boxes here, I can use those same construction do, 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 do. but I can make them smaller Okay. 
So let me check something real quick. Uh, <coughs> 17 and 5 sixteenths. Sixteen and fifteen sixteenths. So my insides are slightly smaller than my outsides. The insides match seventeen and fifteen sixteenths, but the outsides are seventeen and five eighths. Sixteen. Uh, that's 75. This is 16 and 15 sixteenths. So I'm off by 15 sixteenths. Uh, I'm off by 5 eighths, uh, 11 sixteenths on the inside. That's all right. I will deal with that later. I was wondering why my board right here when I move this out right if i come in and i touch this up to the top inside here i'm off by half the distance of my board there it is what it is but it's the same on the two on the center so that's fine as long as i know what it is i can work with it all right final drawers here we're going to do double up so I'm gonna break up this group right here, explode. So each of these are individual. And I'm gonna pull this down, double click. I'm gonna go push pull, and I'm gonna pull this down. Oh, very important, don't do that. I gotta make this unique. Make unique, make unique, make unique the bottom two and the front because when I change something on here I want it to just change that part so you know this um, here I want to just uh, come down I want to push pull this down and I think I need to uh, let's do this first Let's hide this, the bottom right now. This is six inches. So when I push pull this down, I'm gonna pull it down to three and a half. Um, <laughs> let's do that math again. Um, my overall box height is eight inches, okay? Um, and so that, that means I can be at three and a half for each of my two drawers and still have room. So that's what I want this height to be. So I wanna come down uh, to, uh, I wanna bring this down two and a half inches. And what that leaves me with is a part that's three and a half, okay? So same thing, push pull. This time I can just tap to the top of this one over here to make it the same size. Double click, push pull. I can just tap on the top there to bring it down to that size. Double click, push pull, and bring it down to that size. Okay. Now, on that uh, on that three and a quarter tall drawer box. I'm still, or three and a half uh, drawer box, I'm still losing a quarter of an inch, seven thirty seconds because of the base. So I'm, you know, I'm gonna be about three and a quarter inch deep on these drawers, right? As far as the depth and everything. Uh, so if I come back in and I unhide that last, you know, that drawer bottom, let's get rid of this again. I end up with, you know, this drawer that's, uh, three and a half inches tall, but the inside is three and a quarter. All right.
Now, we have to imagine, and remember I haven't cut my openings yet, you know, on the front, and technically, you know, there, I'm not gonna do that, but uh, the openings on the front uh, are the top rail is going to be two inches. The bottom rail is going to be two inches. That leaves, you know, eight inches in the middle. Okay. So what I want to do here is I'm going to drag this, move it. I'm going to drag this down and snap it right on this intersection here. And then I'm going to pull it up and type in two and hit enter. Okay. And that's going to account for that bottom rail that's going to be there. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna hit the control key and drag a copy of this up. And I want space in between them. So let go of the control key and I'm gonna move this up a little bit further, but I'm gonna type in a specific number. And um, as long as I'm less than eight, I'm good. So I'm at three and a half and three and a half. And if I put a quarter inch in between, you know, that is uh, seven and a quarter, right? That still gives me three quarter inch of room. I, and I need room on the bottom. I can't have the bottom of my drawer rubbing on my face frame. So I want to have a little bit of room there, at least a sixteenth of an inch of clearance. And on the top, I want clearance too. So I'm just going to come in here and uh, I'm going to bring this up. Bring this up and I'm going to go uh, 0.375. And that's going to be my clearance between the two drawers. Oh, that's going to be my clearance between the two drawers there. And that'll give me room at the top and the bottom to deal with. And all that. Now with these two, I can hold down the, or click move and hold down the control key. And I can just drag across to duplicate them. I'll move them in the right spot in a moment. Now, these are all kind of copies of one another. So when I change one, it changes them all. And remember, I don't fit here. Remember, I got to shorten in the sides, right? So what I can do is uh, I'm going to undo the copy and I'm going to undo this copy. I'm going to fix one, then make my copies, right? Um, so what I need to do here is on this... I need to be on the inside of my drawer here, which I am, so this is fine on this side. But over here, right over here, I need to move this in. Now I'm not accounting right now, don't scream at me, I'm not accounting for my drawer slides and all that stuff, okay? Hold on, um, I'll get that in just a second. But um, I want to move this in, and when I do that, oops, when I do that, then this part needs to get push-pulled and snap to that line, right? And that should fix the front. No, nope, it's not going to fix the front uh, because they're not unique anymore. So I'll push pull this one also. Now, that's my drawer there, but again, I gotta account for drawer slides. Now, since I'm not a drawer slide expert, I got a drawer slide on the side here. Let me measure real quick and see what I need to be at. <laughs> so, I'm going to come in with a three quarter inch uh, piece of filler and then my drawer slide is I'm blind. All right. 
1632 16 30 seconds so I'll give myself a little bit more cushion than that but here's what I need to do my face frames when I create this frame <clears throat> imagine if you will I'm gonna draw kind of a faux face frame here for a minute Push pull, 0.75, push pull, 0.75, push pull, 0.75. Okay, so imagine my face frame is gonna look like that when I cut my holes out and everything. Now I'm gonna have a filler board in here, <laughs> not going at an angle like that. I'm gonna have a filler board and then my drawer slide is going to mount to that so let's pretend that this is my drawer slide here and that is 16 30 seconds I'll give myself a little bit more room let's go 18 30 seconds that's gonna represent my drawer slide okay and So let's move this, this, get out of my way, get out of my way. Let's move all of this stuff down for a minute. So we'll pretend that that's there just for a second. Now, I wanna move this over to the other side. Move, control, drag this over. I need to flip it along the green axis. Pull that to there. Oop. Now this is all faux junk right this is all just to give me an idea where my box needs to be okay so my filler board my drawer slides and everything uh my full extension drawer slides that's what they're going to come out to there and so now i know where my drawer needs to be and that's the same for the outside ones too you know but I need to be I'm gonna to snap to here let me hide this one for a minute I need to move this into the inside of there and then this part gets push pulled Snap it to the inside. Come on, snap. There we go. Same thing here. This part gets push pulled. To there. All right, and my drawer bottom. push pull to the inside right there okay so now I have a idea of my box right so when that uh, slides in I'll, I've still got to account for my drawer front faces and all that. I want a flush face uh, in everything. And um, so I got to account for all that. 
where the drawer is going to get positioned and everything. So this would technically be, you know, the drawer slide and everything would be further back. And then I would have a drawer front. that uh, is a 16th of an inch light on each side or something, you know, so it's not gonna be the full size, but that's gonna kind of be the, the general gist of it all. So this drawer, looking at this here and everything, I wanna be flush, I don't want anything sticking out and all. Uh, my box size, I've got plenty of room in the back here. So my box size is ideal. And so now that I know that, now I can come in and copy that. And uh, let me take hide that. This gets snapped down to the top of the other drawer. And then once it's snapped there, I'm gonna move it straight up. Make sure I'm moving in a straight line. Straight line. And then 0.375. I wanna be that distance. Okay. And just, you know, for kicks and giggles, imagine if you will, that uh, let's that'll get somebody drunk. Bear with me just a second. Let's undo that. Let's try this one more time. Uh, move control, drag that up to there, select that one and delete it. Select that one and delete it. So imagine if you will, forget, you know, ignoring this again, it's, um, let's get rid of this guideline. But we would have our drawer slides and those two drawers would be sitting in there and then our face is would make everything flush. So with that, now I can come in, I can actually just select all of this. I'll delete what I don't need when I'm done, but I can select all of this and hit the move tool. I can hold down the control key and just drag this over and snap it there to be in the same place, right? And then I can just go in and delete what is not, you know, actually part of this project, you know. So that'll be the drawer boxes and the sizes and everything with the drawer slides that I use. I get them from Amazon in like 10 packs, pairs. But um, that'll be the inside boxes. Now the outside box, I need to really kind of account for that too, uh, for my drawer slides and everything, the full extension drawer slides. So I might as well undo uh, one set of this and move this one over to here for a minute. Oops. Where'd that go? Let's try that again. Not sure what's going berserk there. Let's try that one more time. Move and snap to there. There we go. I can take one of these and move, grab it here and just kind of snap it to here at the top. And that gives me what my big drawers should be, right? These drawers here. So um, I don't need that in my way. So on my big drawer, double click on this. Let's actually move it first. So move, and I'm gonna snap it right up on the edge right there. 
and then I'll work with everything on this side. So double click to get in here in this part right here. I just move that over to the inside of this where the this spoke fake drawer side is. And then I click on the front and I use the push pull tool and I got to come here kind of find the virtual end and then as I move I got to make sure I move the right face. So if it won't let me see the face, you know, if it's not going to let me uh, see the face or anything, I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to get out of that all the way. I will hide this. I will hide this. Then I can come in and Push, pull that to the inside there. And what I do at the top here does it in the back as well. All right. So that'll be that. Now the bottom. Push, pull, and pull that into here. Snap it to that inside corner. And that'll be my big box. And um, on the big box... I kind of, you know, it's going to have, uh, you know, the front drawer face and all of that stuff as well, too. Right. Uh, and so um, if I move that just to the back side of this one here, because that's my three quarter that imagine that being the drawer face, I can now look and see that I've still got clearance back there. Right. When that drawer is fully closed. And that's all I care about, you know. I want because my I got the soft close drawer slides, uh, you know. It'll soft close and it'll pull them into place, and everything. All right. So now that I have that laid out, uh, it's not the it's it's going to be down lower, but I don't care about that right now. Um, right this second, I can go ahead and take select this. Select that, move and control key and drag that over and snap to here for a minute. Oops. And then I can get them into the actual position that they're going to be. So where I'm at here, I'll just go ahead and move this straight down. I'll grab it right here and just move straight down this line all the way till I'm on the face. And if for some reason I don't snap to that face uh, and it's you know critical that I do, I can lift it and snap on the red axis, but I should be able to snap to that face right there. And now I know I'm on that face and then I can come up here and just drag it back to that corner. Okay, so now that I'm there, I gotta go up two inches, but I wanna give myself some room, right? On all of these. So I'll be drawing in my two inch piece here in just a moment. But I wanna move this straight up on the blue axis, straight up two inches. Okay. Do the same thing there. And so I know where the heck I'm actually supposed to be. Let's put the uh, part there where it belongs. Let's get rid of this, this. That drawer front, this, that. And now what that shows me, because I was going to the flush of everything, it shows me my wrong thinking. So my 
front face goes in here, right? Flush with the front, not my drawer. My drawer front's there. This is three quarter. But um, my drawer, I don't have the clearance on the back, so I actually got to bring it in some. On that one, I sh should be good on those still. But let's find out. Move this to there. Move this, hold down the shift key, grab the one at the bottom too. Move back and then in up against the face. So that tells me I am too, I, I don't have a whole lot of clearance back here, so I don't want that. I want to give myself clearance. I don't want to bottom out. So it tells me I got to change these. No big deal. And now that I know that I got to change these, I'm just going to hit delete, 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 right? Leave these, um, leave these here so I can fix them and then I'll copy everything I need. And that's it. So long story short, we're getting the design done. Uh, my face frame and everything on the edges, just so you know what's going to go on here. Uh, I'll draw this first face frame, but from the inside edge, I'm going to have a three, like a face frame on a cabinet. Now I'm going to have a three quarter inch overhang here. Um, so what I want is I need to move in the, let me get my tape measure tool. I need to move in three quarters, 0.75. Remember there's gonna be a filler there on the inside and then I'm gonna have my 18 32nd drawer slide, right? So, 18 30 seconds enter and so this is where my opening is going to be um, no <laughs> my opening is going to be back here forget the drawer slide let's undo that ruler <laughs> my opening is going to be back here uh, two inches from the top God almighty. It's been a long night. Two inches, two inches. From here on the inside, I'll make a little mark there. I'll pull in a guideline to that position and then I want to come in three quarters, 0.75. And this is gonna be my opening. So double click on this. Rectangle there. Push, pull. Push that, not pull, push in to get rid of that. Okay. And then move now this you know on my large drawer and everything remember uh, I'm going to uh, let me move back here for a second if I grab in the middle here at the top and the bottom, I should be able to snap. You're gonna fight with me on this? From a center point there, so I can move around. And what I wanna be is, you know, in here, I wanna be up, you know, quarter of an inch or a sixteenth or something, you know, just I want to I don't want to be rubbing, right? I think a sixteenth is gonna be good. So from here, I'm gonna move up 0 0.0625. Okay. That way I'm 
moved in. Okay, now this drawer would be centered left to right in this opening, but that is the opening. Okay, we're going to repeat that for the other side. This is the opening, so I don't, you know. I could almost, uh, let's do this. All right, pull that in. From there, pull that over 0.75. From here, pull this over, snap to that mark, and then back over 0.75. <coughs> Double click into this part, draw the rectangle. Push pull. That'll be that box opening. Now, on here, um, my upper drawer is going to have a little bit more clearance than my lower drawer, right? Uh, I could decide to divide the drawers within that eight inch space, but I want to put a three eighths inch kind of clearance in between. Uh, and then that just gives me on my upper drawer, just gives me a little bit more headroom in the upper drawer if I need it for larger tools or whatever. Um, and then the, uh, you know, so here, just rinse and repeat. Point seven five. five. Draw the rectangle. Push pull. Okay. And then la <coughs> last, but man, I'm so sorry, guys and girls. I'm I've got a cold, so forgive me. Pull that to there. Over three quarters, 0.75. Here, pull this over, 0.75. Draw the rectangle. Push pull. All right, and then my drawers you know, they're going to be flush with the back of this because I'm going to have a three quarter inch face, right? So they're going to be flush with the back of this. And what that means is, you know, I need to look at how much clearance I have on the back and I have none, right? That's the fundamental problem. I have none. So I need to bring this all in. Now, uh, whatever I bring it in on this size here, I'll just go ahead and make the other one the same size so that everything kind of matches. And then I'll make my copies through and stuff. But I think for the most part, um, I can, heck, I can come in a half inch. And that, you know, that should give me the clearance I need.
And if that's the case, and if I measure this from here to here, I'm at uh, 18 and 7 sixteenths. Um, Eighteen and fifteen sixteenths. This can come in. <coughs> excuse me, six sixteenths. All right. So double click on this. Push pull. Six sixteenths. This move. Now, if I measure that again, I should be from here to here, <laughs> 18 and 9 sixteenths. Well, I don't know how I missed that one. Let me see here. 18 and 7 sixteenths. How did I miss it by 2 sixteenths? All right, let's one more time. Push, pull. Okay, move. And go there. 18 and 7 sixteenths. Now that I have that, I can fix the bottom, right? So let me let me get out of this and let me hide this. Let me hide this and the table down there, right? Because Let's zoom in. Let's get rid of these guidelines. Guidelines drive me crazy. Uh, let's double click on these. Let me see here. Delete. Okay, so if I come and look here, my base, my bottom, that needs to get push-pulled. And if it's not gonna let me do it through the wood, no problem, I can hide this piece for a minute. Push pull. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap it here. And then I'm going to push it pull and hit 0.75 because that's how thick the board is. So I know where to go. And then I can unhide that last part there, right? So that's that one. Unhide all. Okay. So very important. <laughs> very important all the guidelines that I just deleted deleted everything else right so I'm gonna undo control or alternate backspace in this uh, software I'm putting all those guidelines back because those guidelines were associated with some of the hidden geometry. And when I deleted them, I actually deleted the drawers, the top, the bottom, the all of that stuff, right? And so the let's not do that again. Okay. So, very important that when I'm deleting guidelines, if the guidelines are associated with a project and everything and I select them, I need to make sure I'm not actually deleting 
you know, my other items, right? Um, now, Once again, bear with me a second. God, I hate myself for that. That was a stupid, stupid move. Um, There's the part that I was looking for. I deleted it. God, that was so stupid. All right, let's see here. All of that crap, all of that crap that I, just because I wanted to get rid of those guidelines because they were driving me crazy I lost everything because I wasn't paying attention. So I can hide this now. These guidelines here, I can select and I can delete them. They're not associated with any part. Now this one is, it turns blue when I select on it. So I have to open that part. Then I can select on it and I can delete that. Same thing here. I can delete these as long as they're not associated with a part that's important to me. Like that. Okay. That'll be enough for the guidelines. Now, all of this was just to get undo was just to, that was such a waste of time our time and your time and my time we're going to call it a night we're going to hit save right now file save but we're going to hide this one more time and we're going to pull this in this part here because all that resizing was done we're going to pull it in a half an inch so move we're going to go in 0.5 we're going to come out, we're going to go to this one, push pull that and snap it to there. Come into this one, push pull that and snap it to there. That is done. If I come in here and unhide, where is my sheet? Why is it deleting my sheet? What the heck? I'm not going to hide that part. I'm going to move it. <laughs> I'm not going to play this game anymore. Move. Move out of the way. Stay there. Jeez. Come in here. Make sure nothing is grouped with this. Move 0 0.5. Push pull. Snap it to there. Gosh almighty. That's where designing gets frustrating when things play don't play nice. That is done. Now this part. I need to move this part in. <clears throat> um, I'll measure it. So I'm currently right now at 18 and 15 sixteenths. I need to get to 18 and 7 sixteenths. So if I double click on this and I push pull this, 15 sixteenths minus 7 sixteenths should be 6 sixteenths. Am I wrong or am I right? 15 and 7. 7 and 7 is 14. 8. 8 sixteenths. 8 sixteenths. What the hell would that be? 
Now, if I measure that, 18 and 7 sixteenths. I don't know why I was off by, I was going the wrong direction. All right, move, move that in. Done. Holy camoly. Got to switch over. I'm not hiding anything for right now. I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute. I'm going to move this. I'll leave that there. But I need to come in here. I'm going to push pull this part. I'm going to snap it back to the edge. And then I'm going to move it in three quarters, 0.75. Then I'm going to come in here and do edit unhide to put that part back. Now I've got to do the same thing with this drawer here. Let's try this again. Push pull. Snap that back there. Push pull. 0.75. Hit enter. Get out of there and edit, undo, unhide, last, edit, unhide, all. Unhide, all. There we go. Okay, now I can move this back to its position, making sure that it's snapped to there. I can hide that, and I found I figured out why it was deleting everything. I was inside a component, so when I was clicking unhide, it was unhiding everything that was not that was inside that component I was clicked into. If I would have clicked out of it and did unhide, it would have put all those parts back. So all of those undos that I did 20 minutes ago were absolutely unnecessary. Isn't that just the most aggravating thing you ever heard? And the reason why uh, it was not necessary is because I was still in one of these components. You see those dotted lines? And um, it was when I was unhiding, it wasn't showing me everything because it thinks that it wanted me to unhide what was inside that component. If I would have just clicked out and then did unhide, all of that stuff would have came back that I thought I deleted. How aggravating is that? All right. So the most aggravating part is when you realize after the fact that it wasn't necessary. All right. So I should be able to come in and delete these guides now safely. All the black guides are inside that component that's I've got lit up and now I should be able to click on this and that. And now that I'm not in any component, let me get rid of this little tape measure mark right there. Now that I'm not in any component, I should be able to unhide all and it put my top back on there, right? So, gosh, oh my. All right, let's hit save, file save. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's where we're at. Let's go ahead and just, this is the last thing and we're going to say goodnight. We're going to get these drawers, uh, copies of these drawers in uh, place and everything in position. Um, and... I'm going to just hide this for a moment so I can come in here. Now, my position, <laughs> excuse me, my position on this, uh, this drawer front, if I move this over, uh, I want to lock into this inside corner for a minute. And then I'm going to move it three quarters of an inch, which is that outside edge. Keeping that same position, I want to move it over another 18, 30 seconds. That's the thickness of my drawer slide. So that's 
my distance. Now, if I measure from here, oh, look, the word of mercy. I'm still in the move tool. If I measure from here straight across to that inside corner, that's one and five sixteenths. I should, if all is right with the world, I should be able to measure over here and be at one and five sixteenths. Okay. So now up here, now that I'm in position, I can grab this, move, grab it right on this line and kind of lift up, keeping my blue axis. And I can come down, keeping my blue axis. Stay on the blue. Stay on the blue. Hold on a second. Escape or uh, undo control Z. All right, I'm gonna hold my alternate key. Is it my alternate key? Oh, that's gonna be the most aggravating thing in the whole world. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Is it my control key? It is my control key. My control key keeps the restriction. So I'm going to move it up just to here. Nope. Goofball control key is a copy. I thought it was, I was like, man, that's working. Uh, is it my shift key? It is my shift key. Sorry. Shift. I want to move this up. Yeah, shift could, should keep me restricted on A axis there and all that good stuff. Good. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to go up shift and wrong part. Okay. Now snap to that little line. I'm going to come down. And I'm right at the top, inside edge of that frame. And so now I can hold that shift key down. I can move up just a little bit. I hate when I, I it, it wants to go whatever direction it wants to go. Let me try that again. Up. And I can type in a distance. And it's already snapped to 1 16th from the last time of what I did. And I'm just going to leave that be. So that's going to be that drawer front. Now I'm going to hit the control key and I'm going to drag a copy up here and then I'm going to lift that up and I'm going to type in 0.375 and move that three eighths of an inch up. So that's going to be my two drawers there. Now coming in here, I'm going to select both of these items, hold down the control key move first, M key first, hold down the control key, stay on my axis, on the green axis, on the green axis, which I am. Let me come over here. And again, as long as I stay on the green axis, coming over, I can snap to here, stay on that green axis. And I can move off that and type in my one and five sixteenths. It doesn't like the one dash. Uh, one point three one two five. There we go. All right. So that's position there. Ha oh, ha! Hit the escape key. Put it back. There we go. That's position there. Yay. All right, this cabinet technically should be centered already with my 116th from earlier today. Uh, and I can verify the measurement. Now, it's not going to be 116th, uh, 116th on this because this box, the outside boxes are slightly wider. But I should be able to measure here to here, one and an eighth. And I should be able to measure here to here, and that's one and a half. So I'm not centered. Yeah, I'm definitely not centered. 
Okie dokie. So if I'm one and an eighth over here, one and a half over here, that's a three eighths inch difference, right? So three sixteenths, I need to move over to the left. So let's take this. Stay on that axis. <laughs> it does not like that axis. There we go. 0.1875. Okay. Measure from there to there. One and five sixteenths. One and five sixteenths. So it is one and five sixteenths. All right, cool. All right, and I've already got my 16th of an inch clearance there. So all I need to do is move this over. I grab it right on the corner here. Keeping on that green axis. And let's do our measurements. Tape measure. That's not the tape measure. And this is it. Tape measure over here to here. One and three eighths. One and a quarter. So I need to move this way <coughs> excuse me by a sixteenth come on now one more time stop on the green axis three sixteenths I need to move 0 0.0625 take my tape measure and measure from here to here 1 and 5 sixteenths holy camoly we got there 1 and 5 sixteenths now this design let's unhide everything unhide all save everything in the Vetric software, I'm going to create a job that is, uh, we'll just do it, uh, you know, a four by eight sheet. But I'm going to go here uh, on the X, I'll go 48. On the Y, 96. On the Z, 0 0.71875, 23 30 seconds. Um, click OK, and I can import the vector file, and it's going to say exploded flat view. I want to explode everything out in a flat view. Um, I don't care which, I can auto orientate uh, the faces, so that's fine. Um, I want to create circles where there's arcs if there's any. Retrofit the arcs to refit the arcs to boundaries. I want to keep my grouped components together. And um, I'll leave this replace boundaries. Uh, I'll replace that. I'll leave that unchecked. There's 47 parts. When I click OK, it's going to import all of the parts, right? Okay, so these, just so you know what's what, these are my two end pieces here. So I'll pull them out to the side, that's each end. So that's my two end pieces. These are my three internal pieces. These are my drawer box parts, which I'm not gonna run on the CNC, I'll do that on the table saw. This is my end part or uh, I'm sorry, my one face with the, uh, it's gonna either be the one with the jaws or the front. I'll have to figure that out, I'll do some measurements. This is my other one. All of these rectangles are jaw parts and bottoms and everything, jaw parts. 
drawer bottoms, right? My top sheet and my bottom sheet. Now I don't need all of this stuff, you know, in here. I'm only need the one that I'm doing the joinery on, right? So I'm not gonna, we're not gonna lay out this all tonight and everything here, but this is now all of my parts. Everything I drew in SketchUp are all brought in and scaled. Now I can come in and I can ungroup parts and I can put in my fillets, you know, based on the bit that I'm gonna be using, the tool radius and everything, and I can create my fillets. And also when my joinery goes together, it's hidden by the other joinery. Uh, I don't want dog bone fillets. I don't want to see the joinery on the corners. I want the T-bone fillets. And so I can put all my fillets in and I can create all my dados, uh, you know, and everything uh, and my rabbits and all that stuff. Uh, I only have a few rabbits on the ends, but that's it. Okay, that's where we're at for tonight. Okay, so that is the SketchUp side of things when it comes to the design, visualizing the design as a whole and uh, getting it created and then come in. Now on the parts, these windows here, it's the ones where the rectangles are um, <clears throat> 14 and 5 sixteenths by eight, right? 14 and 5 sixteenths. So if I come back into Vetric and I measure one of these or select one, 14.2812 by eight. Let's look at the other one. That's 15, so that's not, it's gonna be this one. This is the proper size this is the rounded up size. For some reason, the tape measure is not, it's rounding up. So anyway, it's not the exact measurement. But that's okay, it's the exact in vetric. That's all I need, all I care about. Now in here, I told you I wanted to kind of round these off, right? These radiuses and stuff. Now that I have them kind of here, I can come into the rectangle tool and I can add in the radius as far as whatever size I think they you know, should be. Uh, to create those shapes, right? And I can do that, you know, all the way around to create those openings. And whatever radius I decide to put on one, I'll create that for the others as well as the inside and the two outside edges as well. I'll keep the radius the same and everything for those, right? And that's a three inch radius there. Let's undo that. Let's see what a four inch radius you know That could be good there. Right, right. So, looking good. So either way, I will fix those because I want them rounded. I don't want them square. And I may not want them truly rounded like this. I may reduce the radius, you know. Um, and I just may create a small radius in the corners. You know, it could be, you know, like a two inch radius or something just to kind of round off the corners and give me more of an opening, right? Something. I'll figure all that out and we'll talk about that next time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's dropped off and went to sleep. So we'll catch you in the next one. And uh, you all have an amazing evening. But this is going to be our bench, right? So we'll see how it all comes together. And then uh, I'll, um, now my CNC is a 2440, right? So on my parts, I have to tile the designs, you know, to cut to the tool path, move the board down, cut the other. I have a four by eight, but it's not set up yet. So I got to cut these on my 2440 and I'm going to cut these on my 2440. Uh, and everything and uh, so we'll be talking about tiling in the next go around and all that stuff all right everyone y'all have a wonderful evening and thanks for hanging out with me this long it was a long late night 
I probably bored you all to death, but if I didn't, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.